What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Zealand, and today I'm going to be making a deck. I've made it, and it's called Dust On, and uh, I'm going to show you why it's not dead and why it could be relevant, this format, and uh, this is my attempt at making it as relevant as possible. So we'll start with the monsters. Uh, so real quick, I'll explain each Dust On. I won't read it, but I know what they do. So here's three uh, House Dust On. This is the most important one. Uh, what happens is if it's destroyed by battle while face up already uh, before the damage step, or if it's uh, destroyed by card effect while face up on the field, you can special summon as many Dust Ons as you'd like from your deck or hand, equal, but they have to be the same number on each side. So if this is already face up and they attack into it, you take the damage, it is destroyed. Then you can special two Dust Ons on their field and two on yours, or three on theirs and three on yours. It's very important. It depends on how many monsters they have, but ideally you want to use as many Dust Ons from your hand or deck as possible. Um, it is also a light and a level one, so it's a very easy target for a spell card where our foul that is in the deck. Um, and it is searchable to some extent. So, other than those three, we have our honorary Dust On in a way. It is a uh, Stygian Security. If it's destroyed, by a battle at all, then you can activate the effect to special summon a level 1 fiend from your deck. It is always going to be house dust on. So, in a, in a sense, it's just getting house dust on out already. The difference is, it can be face down, so if they don't know what you're playing, which they usually won't, <laughs> or they won't assume it's dust on, they'll attack into it, and then you'll get your house dust on, and if they choose to attack again, then the house dust on will float into more dust ons. Um, ideally, you'll be going second, and you can crash into their monsters to summon a house dust on, and then you can attack with house dust on. So it's more damage, but it gets you to house dust on faster. So we max out on those. Um, next are the dust ons you're going to be filling up the field with. So right here, we've got two yellow, two blue, two red, and one white. So you can special summon any number of dust ons from your hander deck with house dust on, but this also includes itself. So, ideally, you're putting one on each side of the field. Assuming they have one monster on their side of the field that they attack you with after you, you know, bait them or stop them or you're going second or you kaiju them or whatever, you're going to want to summon four to their side and then five to your side. So, having three house dust on and then, you know, two, four, six, uh, plus three is nine, and then the seventh is ten, that should give you enough to fill the field. Um, white dust on doesn't do anything. The gimmick with these dust ons is that they can't be used for any summon other than link summoning. Uh, so they can't be tributed at all, they can't be used for fusions, they can't be used for XYZs, and they can't be used for synchros. Um, so you give them a bunch of these, they can't do anything with them. The thing is you can link with these, and this has no effect, so you can synchro or XC with them, but there's only one, so they're not going to be able to do it unless they're playing a level 1 deck for some reason. Um, so that's pretty interesting in and of itself. The problem with this deck is that ever since Link Summoning was introduced, um, you're not... Like, it stopped being efficient. It stopped actually slowing down the game, and it just gave the material to Link Summon. So, what's the point of all this? Why are you flooding the field with Dusty Boys? Why are you giving them monsters to fuel the fire? Why are you filling your field with things you can't actually use? Um, it's because this deck's boss monster is Stardust on, and, uh... This card can be special summon cannot be normal summoned. It can be special summoned by sending as many dust on monsters that you would like to the graveyard. So you're not tributing them, you're just sending them. So you're allowed to do that once your field is full of dust ons. If your opponent controls more monster than you, monsters than you, it destroys itself. So you can't just lock them out of the game and then attack them over and over again with four thousand attack or whatever. Which is unfortunate. However, um, they cannot activate set spell traps on the field. They cannot um, special summon at all. And it gains attack equal to the number of dust ons you sent from your field to the graveyard to special summon it. So, what's going to happen is, ideally, you're going to be destroying your monster and flooding the field with these guys. And then they're going to say, okay, uh, well, I'm still going to be able to link summon. And then you slap down Stardust on, and they can't XYZ because of their own effects, but they can't special summon at all. So, this card effectively takes the link mechanic out of the game for you, instead of needing a separate dust on rule that says you can do that. So, once you have this down, they're going to have four, three, two, or whatever dust ons on their field, and then you just attack them over and over again. 
Um, one thing I haven't covered with the other Dustons is they have effects when they're destroyed, and all their effects are negative. So the point um, of flooding the field with those Dustons is this one banishes a card from your hand until the next standby phase, and if your opponent controls this and you destroy it, their card from their hand at random gets banished face down until the end phase. This one is bad for them, but kind of good for you, because you need Dustons to summon from your deck or hand, so if it's destroyed by any reason, you target a monster in your graveyard and then shuffle it back into the deck. So this is good for you, but if they have things in their graveyard they want, then they're forced to shuffle one back when it's destroyed and they control it. And this one burns for 500. So it's kind of relevant, but not really. Um, it just helps in time if, you know, you can't get to your win condition, which I will get to in a second, and then you just burn them for 500 or 1,000, and then they're out of luck. So, reminder, this says no special summoning at all, and the other ones, they, they can't be used for material for any type of non-normal summoning. Um, so next, we have hand traps. All right, You're going to be going second, ideally, and they usually want to go first. So this can be used for two ways. One is to stop their big plays. Um, so, big attacks, you know, big things you know will lose you the game. So that's its secondary purpose, but its main purpose is when you attack with House Dust on, and it's sent to Grave, it activates Engrave. So if they impermanence this, veil this, nothing's going to happen, but it activates Engrave, and what happens is you're not going to control any monsters because this is the only one you're using to attack, and um, they're going to try and Ash you. Or something like that. Or it's in damage step, so they can't. But if they, um, at the end of the damage step, so they can't ash you. However, if they have a monster like a Savage Dragon or a, a Dragoon or anything that would negate this effect, you just activate Gamma, and it's fine. It doesn't have to destroy the Dragoon. It just negates it. So it makes sure that House Dust On goes through, no matter what. Um, and you're running the whole package, so you have three whole cards, a playset that is going to stop that. And if you open this, it doesn't really matter, because all you need is House Dust On, or a way to get to House Dust On. Um, so that is a very good hand trap. This is an awesome hand trap. I'm not running it at three, because uh, with Where Arf Thou, you can kind of search it after your normal summon. But this stops Drytron, this starts things like Tri Brigade Zoo, this stops things like anything that adds to deck. Um, however, Drytron, Drytron with the right hand can play around this, but this impedes them a lot. So, you know, and Sky Striker with Engage coming back, this stops them to just waiting for next turn and trying to play that slow game. But you're not going to be playing as slow of a game as them. You're going to be speeding things up by clogging up their field with Dustons. So that is why we play two of these. And then two Kaijus. Um, Kaijus have kind of fallen out of favor, but in this deck is very important. Because if they have a Herald or any Negates or a Dragoon or something, you're getting rid of the threat, but still giving them a monster in attack position to attack into with House Dust on. So you can take 2800 damage because once you flood the field and you Stardust on, they're not going to be able to summon anything. And then you just attack them from there. However, uh, you can't summon this in the battle phase, unfortunately. So it's going to be main phase two. And what happens is they're going to switch all their monsters to defense and wait till they draw an out to Stardust on. Um, ideally they don't have an out because they said everything, but usually they're not, they're just going to have to wait. Especially if they're up on life points after you attack into this. But this gets rid of a lot of issues and it still, um, is a dark monster. So if you side or main super poly, you can kaiju their big monster and a lot of their other big deals are dark. And then you can just fuse them away into something else if you choose to play that offensive route. But we'll get into that when we talk about the side deck. This is... Basically a slow hand trap. It's a going second card, and ideally you want to go second. So that's it for the hand traps and the kaijus. Um, spells are very important. The first thing is called by the grave. It stops Ash when you decide to wear Arf Thou or you want to search or anything like that, but it's mostly for War Arf Thou. Uh, three War Arf Thou. Um, you are going to want to have Star Dust on. Even if you have House Dust on, that doesn't win you the game by itself. So, you, normal summoning house dust on or any other dust on uh, will help you get into stitch and security, help you get into house dust on. If you already have house dust on, you can normal summon it, use this to search uh, effect veiler. If they force you to go first, search for uh, droll and lockbird if they force you to go first. Or even if you're going second and you know you can't OTK them that turn. Um, or star dust on, which is ideal. And then we play two cosmic cyclone. 
This card is very important because if they decide to schism you or if they want to play a weird floodgate, you just hold. Because if House Dust Down is destroyed while face up on the field, you get to flood the field anyway. So the best they can do is negate the summon, and you need a judgment to do that or something like that, and that's not going to happen, ideally. Um, so you're going to need this to get rid of big threats that say, okay, all your monster's effects are negated, or things that threaten Stardust on, or things that gain them advantage. So Striker, you know, hit the multi-roll, hit, hit the uh, blind back row cards. Uh, ideally, you're not going in blind, you're going to wait till they flip something, or you know that card's important and they only have one of it, like Engage. Uh, but there are other examples other than Sky Striker, it's just Striker's very prevalent and it grinds a lot. So, I am playing a relatively controversial card, is Double Summon. The thing is, this deck used to rely pretty heavily on uh, the Fiend card Goblin King, that says as many Fiend monsters on the field, it gains a thousand attack for each, and then it cannot be targeted for attack if you control another fiend monster, but I think that that is very, very slow. And the thing is, this deck is inherently a little slow because, you know, you have to rely on your opponent to have a monster, you have to summon everything, you have to wait till main phase two to summon Stardust on. but the reason I don't play Goblin King is because by the time you can summon Goblin King and attack for game, they're going to switch all their stuff into defense anyway. And the best way to do that is either one for one or double summon, and that's a three card combo. You need Goblin King in your hand, this in your hand, and House Dust on in your hand, or a Stitch in Security as a way to get into it. I don't want to deal with that three card combo, um, and then searching Goblin King, and then summoning it, and getting it negated or anything. I just cut that whole engine out, and I'm focusing on the Dust on. That's cool because it's pure, but in my opinion, it's more efficient. So the point of this is, if they stop your inherent summon, or your mechanically inclined summon, like normal summon or anything, or special summon, then you can double summon and use another House Dust on. And if you have two House Dustons on the field, you can bait them to get rid of it, or bait their negate, and then attack with another House Duston, and then your effects are all the way through. Um, the reason I don't run one for one is because if your Duston's in Grave, you cannot summon it to your opponent's field or your field when House Duston's destroyed, so you don't want to discard cards. You want to use all the cards in your hand. If you discard a Kaiju, you don't have the Kaiju anymore. If you discard a Cosmic, well, you know, another monster, like a Duston, you cannot summon that Dust on from the grave, and there's no real way to get it back without running cards like, you know, Pot of Avarice, which you don't actually need because the game shouldn't be lasting that long if you're reverse OTKing them. And by reverse OTK, I'll explain in a second. Forbidden Chalice, uh, I run this instead of Valor because Valor is good to stop things like Drytron and Diviner and stuff like that. But the second, you know, if you're going second ideally, and if they have a monster that just negates things, or is a Floodgate monster that says you can't Special Summon, you cannot Veiler that, because it's your turn. So, anything that stops you from Special Summoning that's a monster, you just use this, and it either baits the negate of like an Emancipator Earth monster, or a Floodgate monster, you know, it keeps the monster on the field, but it negates its effects. So it's just a dummy that you're going to use to crash into with House Dust on. And I run this over Veiler because you're going to be going second, and rather than stopping them, you want to be proactive on your turn. Um, so that was very controversial, in my opinion. It was kind of like a choke point in the deck, but siding Valor is better, even though you can search it with this. Um, next are the traps. So I run Red Reboot, stops the trap, sets it, and then once you summon Stardust on, they can't flip the traps they set at all. Uh, I run Dust on Roller. Uh, this is pretty good. It just turns whatever they summon into a dust on. Basically, they can't use XYZ Synchro uh, uh, Ritual. They cannot tribute it or fusion like all the other dust ons. They can link with it, but once you stop all those types of summons, it, it they can't tribute it for anything. So it just it stuns them. And if it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can add any dust on card from your deck to your hand. So that surprise factor, you get to search if they you know destroy it with anything which is less likely, but it's mostly just to stun them and then search dust ons. And then your win condition of this deck is this trap card, Battle Mania. What it does is during your opponent's standby phase, you flip it and then you force all of their monsters that they control into attack position, and they must attack if able. So when they turn all their monsters to defense after you've Stardust on, they're waiting for an out to Stardust on, but by the time that happens, you'll have Battle Mania. You'll switch all their dust ons to attack, and then since they can't special summon, the dust will still be there, and they'll attack you because they have to. And their only target for attack is Stardust on, which is either at 3,000, 4,000, 2,000 attack, 
and they'll just game themselves. And that's why I call it a reverse OTK, because they're doing it to themselves, and the fastest it can happen is turn two. Or, well, turn three, because you have to go second. Um, and then I run the one trap trick, because it makes this cool pyramid shape when I lay them all out like that, but mostly because if you run two trap trick, or a three trap trick, it's dead. That's up for debate, you know, because depending on how quickly you want to get to this, or optionally this, but this is your win condition. And if you're running two trap tricks, that card is dead. Um, so right now I'm running just one, because you'll never need a second copy once you see the first one, and this banishes this to set this, and you'll have another one in your deck in case you need it or you draw into it. Um, but ideally, you just draw into this naturally, and Trap Trick is just an extension. I don't run more than that because you'll never use two Trap Tricks in a game. And uh, that's the main deck. So what we're going to get to next is the extra deck. Uh, fusion Targets. Uh, two monsters of the same uh, attribute, different types. One Dark and a Fusion. Two Darks on the field anywhere. This one's pretty important because it takes two Cybers monsters, any Cybers monster, it's a light, it's a level 5. So if they're playing Adding Nister and make a big wall, um, it might be unaffected by card effects, so you can't fuse with it. However, you're going to flood the field and force them to attack you with other things. So if there's a big negating threat, you just fuse with those um, and any other Cybers deck. Solid is back, so we have room to play that and just fuse and attack with them. And they have another monster, so it'll negate their traps and you can just do your dust on thing. This is my favorite Synchro card. Uh, if you Gamma them during your turn, you make the Synchro card, and this just banishes any monster effect that activates. It doesn't negate, it just banishes it. So it's good removal, and then you can attack for game with it. It makes two attacks on monsters, and the first monster it destroys, it gains attack equal to its original attack permanently. So that's pretty nice. Um, let's say you flood the field with Dust Songs, and you're waiting to draw um, Battle Mania. But you want to win quicker than that, because they could draw an out sooner than you will. Uh, you play this. Uh, this card is called Underground Goddess of the Closed World. It takes five monsters to Link Summon, but it's any five monsters. And then, um, effect monsters, I should say. And you can use one of your opponent's monsters as tribute. So if they choose to make a big Link, then you can just fuse with the five dust ons you have, or the four dust ons you have, and use the Link as material. Um, this also negates a Graveyard Effect that activates... And if I remember correctly, uh, it's unaffected by your opponent's activated effects unless they target it. So it's like halfway of towers, and uh, yeah, if they activate a card or effect that special summons a monster from the graveyard, you can negate the activation. And that's a quick effect. So this is your alternate win condition. Griffin is really good because it takes four. You can set a spell or trap like Battle Mania or Trap Trick or Dust on Roller to stun or just end the game. And they can't activate effects unless it's linked. And they can't special summon if you have Stardust on. Link Karibo is really good. It's a Cyburst. It's dark, so you can fuse with it and it dodges things. But mainly, you want Secure Gardner. Uh, if they force you to go first, you can set stun cards or your win condition. And then you can link in a Link Karibo or Almirage, which should be in this extra deck. But right now, it's not. Um, so take note of that. And then, if it's destroyed by, like, Dragoon, you don't take the effect damage of a 1,000. And if they battle you, the first damage you take while well, this is face-up on the field is, like, nothing. It's zero. Um, the rest of these cards are up for debate. They're just filler. One of these should definitely be an Almirage, and the rest of these can be any big Link monsters you want. But I left that just open because I don't have every Link monster ever. Boral Load, Boral Sword, and uh, Zero Boros are the big ones you want. So that's three. One is for Almirage, and then you have three left for if you want to play, like, you know, big boy dust ons like Extravagance or whatever, or... But you're not going to be playing Desires, and you're not going to be playing Duality. So you want to be able to Special Summon. So this is what you need to know. Almirage, Big Links, and that's the extra deck. This last thing I'm going to go over is the side deck. Very important. You know, we'll get that out of the way. So side deck is when they make you go first, and you punish them with huge traps. So, this not only ends Drytron, they're forced to summon a monster, but you wait till they summon something, then they can't tribute it, and you reverse game them. Uh, Monarchs, for some reason. Um, Sky Striker sends, but Ray tributes, so if they have Ray on the field, they can't really get rid of it without linking. Uh, but this is just, it hits Drytron and other tricky things. Uh, Judgment hits board wipes, 
uh, stops them from blowing your back out when you set Battle Mania and all that stuff, or if they have, um, since we are not running Ash at all, because that's a one-for-one, -one, and this deck can't really afford a lot of one-for-ones unless you have the right cards in hand. So this will stop Red Eyes Fusion. It'll tempt them to attack you since you're only at half life, and then you say, all right, Stygian Security, or you pause their game and then attack into them, and you'll be okay. Um, I run one strike because it makes another pyramid, um, and it stops things from negating your house dust on. Like when it's destroyed and they activate a monster effect, you say no. If you have Her if they somehow make Herald and you don't have the Kaiju, you set this, and then you attack into their monster, and when you activate house dust on's effect, they're going to say Herald, and you say counter trap, you can't respond to it without Red Reboot, or your own judgment. And after that it'll be destroyed and they'll have their other weird monster. Super Poly is a spell, quick play spell, we all know what this does, and if you don't, well you're bound to find out playing any of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but you fuse with your opponent's monsters as well. This gets rid of Herald because they're going to summon light monsters, and if the, the other one's not a fairy, you can just fuse it away, attack with your own guy, you know, house dust on things. I debated running this over Forbidden Chalice, but if you're going second, you can run Chalice and this for first and second, and it's level one, so you can normal summon it, War Fell, add house dust on, and then link into Al Mirage or Link Karibo, and then guarantee you live another turn, basically, by going into Secure Gardener. Harpy's Feather Duster is really good with the uh, uh, Red Reboot that we run in the main. Uh, we run this because we're Arthal, and you can hit Engage, single cards that are important, and this negates one Grave Effect interaction that activates in the Graveyard. I'm running one because we're low on space, and you can't search it with War Arthal, but it's an option. It could be something else, but I just like stopping Grave things, because if they banish all our resources that are in the Grave, it shouldn't matter, but if they have a Grave Effect that stops Stardust on, then you might lose the game. The last two slots are a Dust on specific card called Diamond Dust on, and what this does is it destroy if a card you control or on the field is destroyed by a card effect, or, yeah, a card effect, you can special as many Dust Ons from your deck, as cards that were destroyed, so for example, if you use a Twin Twister and destroy two of their back rows while this has been set for a turn, you can flip it and summon two Dust Ons, either one, two on your field, one on each field, or two on their field, up to the number of cards that were destroyed. This is a way you get your house Dust Ons on the field, if they destroy anything, uh, by battle, or card effect, and it just, it, it's for going first. It summons how it's Dust On right out of your deck, instead of you waiting to draw the, the Dust On Exodia. Um, the other effect is if it's in the graveyard, you can banish it in another Dust On to summon this card as a Dust On with zero attack, a thousand defense into your opponent's field or to your field in defense position. So this prevents OTKs, and if it's destroyed, you can activate another House Dust On, which is why we run two. But also, it's a monster to give to your opponent to either shut down their striker plays and force them to send it off area zero or multi roll, um, or you can use Battle Mania to switch it to attack and force them to attack you. So if they don't have a monster, you can use this. Um, I'm not running Silent Wobby right now, mainly because I don't have them. I used to have a lot, and it was like 10 bucks. Uh, and it was like 3 bucks, but it's 10 bucks now. <laughs> um, but long story short, this is a good card to have if you're going first just to set, and if they happen to be running extra spell trap removal or monster removal, you can summon another one to improve the longevity of your game. So that is the rest of uh, the Dust On deck. Thanks for watching. Um, I plan on doing doing book videos, getting my rank up, replay videos to showcase the dust on. I like deck profiles, I love them, but I would hate for anyone who's viewing this to have to try it themselves to see what it does and how practical the effects are and how often you'll get what. So I want to show this to you and, you know, take away the work. So if you choose to follow this or make any modifications, you'll know what it does at, at this rate. Um, I was planning on doing a remote duel tonight, but it was uh, canceled locally for the YCS, which I didn't get to sign up for because I start uh, work again on Sunday. So if I do any tournaments with this, which I will, um, I'll let you know how those go and if I make any modifications or improvements. And uh, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is Zeeland, and uh, see you next time.